coming up on show 405, another country band's combustion engines. Elon's back on Twitter, this time talking about paint and the world's first truckla. All those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. All right, it's Martin here. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to the show. This podcast is called EV News Daily because I go through every bit of EV news that I can find every single day. And surely I'm barely scratching the surface of it because there's so much going on. This really could be a 24-hour rolling radio show if anybody could stand that. Surely that's nobody. There is so much news going on, but I try and whittle it down to 15, 20 minutes because I know that your time is precious. And so I try and give you a a wrap-up of the day's EV news in a way that saves you time, but means that you know everything that's going on so that if there's conversations at work, amongst friends, or just for your own knowledge, you know what's happening. Hello to new producers. Two new producers. First one's Clinton. Now, I think I say his surname, Devo, but I've emailed, I've messaged Clinton via the Patreon messaging system to say, oh, please let me know how I pronounce your surname so I, I get it right. Anyway, Clinton, I think that's, uh, I think it's Devo. Uh, and also new producer, Neil Butler as well. Hello to both of you. Tomorrow is Clean Air Day. And if you are going along to... The Tri EV events. This looks really interesting, actually. Uh, Tri EV is a company here in the UK that is enabling you to get into EVs. Well, the name is kind of a giveaway. You can try an EV. And Clean Air Day will be with Hammersmith and Fulham Council at Lyric Square, showcasing electric vans. Go and say hello to the TriEV.com team if you're going along to that. I, for Clean Air Day, have got a couple of things going on. First of all, I'll be early in the morning. Uh, I, I'm heading up to London, uh, as I do uh, a fair bit these days, but first thing in the morning, I'm going to be going to Tesla for the first ever right-hand drive Model 3s in the world because we are a right-hand drive market. The very first customers in the world are getting those, so I'll be there with the cameras and the EV News Daily microphones to talk to those owners, if they want to, about what it was like, the weight, the spec they went for, their history with Tesla, whether they're electric owners already, whether they're Tesla owners already, or whether they're EV first-timers. I'm going to ask as many people as I can uh, some questions and also hopefully tomorrow, if I can, uh, I want to pop in very quickly to the centre of town in London because Omi, that's the the company that have this smart charging cable that work with Octopus Energy and it will charge your car when it's the grid is at its cleanest, greenest and cheapest as well and they're having an event as well for Clean Air Day so if if I can manage some time super busy because I am away this weekend at the French Grand Prix. It's in the south of France. Hard life, eh? And it's uh, somewhere called Paul Ricard. Circuit Paul Ricard. So I'll be flying out on Friday. Fear not. The podcast will continue. I'll just be doing it from some French Wi-Fi somewhere and amongst that watching uh, some motor racing, qualifying, race on Sunday as well. Those who listen to the podcast know that as well as being a big Formula E fan, I'm a massive Formula One fan as well. So that's where I'll be this weekend. But still, as always, still making the podcast for you. So this is... Oh, by the way, how did I almost forget this? Thank you to myev.com for helping make the show. If you're in the USA, you can use that as a resource for buying and selling EVs and learning about them along the way as well. No mucking about with those fossil cars, only electric cars at myev.com. In what has been described as a total boss move, Simone Goetz, who for a long time wanted her own electric pickup truck, took matters into her own hands and made her very own custom Tesla pickup, which she has named Truckla, says Popular Mechanics. Now, lots of places, in fact, hundreds of media outlets reported on this today. She put a YouTube video up and it. last time I looked, it was over a million views. Awesome. And well done her. Uh, the project took a year of planning, required a complete teardown of the car's interior, the door panels, the gaskets. Once that was done, the team that she worked with, including the hosts of Rich Rebuild as well, another one of my favourite channels, moved on to the frame. And that does mean angle grinders and reciprocating saws. Yes, Simone went online, bought a Model 3, and then cut it in half. And they took off the roof. The bed of the truck la is from an F-150. The rear window came from a GMC Canyon, and you can watch the whole video online. I'm going to put a link to Popular Mechanics on the show notes, but she's done an amazing job with this and is going to be getting a ton of press over the next 
few days and weeks. Deserves every bit of the attention as well. Uh, just brilliant. I mentioned this at the beginning of the show. Another government has planned to ban the sale of new petrol and diesel. This time, the date is 2030. This time, the country is Ireland. The Irish government's aim is to ensure that all new cars and vans on Irish roads in 11 years' time are electric vehicles, reports the BBC today. They say the proposed legislation was amongst one of 180 measures. The Irish government's Climate Action Plan is set to tackle. By the time petrol and diesel is banned in 2030, uh, there should be almost a million EVs on the roads in Ireland, where the government is investing in a huge charging network to power the vehicles. By the middle of next decade, one recharging point will be required at any new non-residential building that has more than 10 parking spaces. That's a great That's a great bit of legislation. More people should take that on board. If you are building anything that's not residential premises, like an office block, for every 10 parking spaces, at least one EV charger. Putting up a, a parking lot with 100 spaces in, it's not unreasonable to say there should be 10 EV chargers, is it? I'm going to pop a link to BBC News in the show notes if you want to read more. Moving on to a very luxurious car brand now, and that is Bentley. And according to a new report from Car and Driver, Bentley has a timeline for its electric plans with the company's first fully electric car on the way, but don't get your checkbook ready just yet. It's coming in 2025, says MotorOne.com. Along with its first electric vehicle, Bentley plans to hybridize, yes, that is a word, hybridize every model in its lineup. We're talking Continental GT, Flying Spur, the Mul- San. The company is going to use the turbocharged 3-litre V6 that you get in the Bentayga, also rumoured to power the Continental GT Hybrid. So any Bentley drivers that particularly like being fossil gobblers, don't worry, you'll have a big engine to waste all your money on putting gas inside it, 443 horsepower coming from the Bentayga engine, but add in the extra electric power as well, the torque from the motor, the 17.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, and you will get some incredible performance in your Bentley as well. Let's talk Neo. Go to China. And Neo announced today the first ES6. It's a pure electric, it's a crossover, and it's the very first one's been delivered to the very new owners. And that's happening in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. It's the automaker's second mass production model, and it follows the larger ES8. But the company also has plans for a hypercar in the future. That's called the ES. P9. It's very impressive, says CNET today. Uh, As for the ES6, well, five seats on board, smaller than its uh, sister cars, shorter than the ES8, uh, although the wheelbase is the same. Buyers have a choice of two powertrains as well. You can get a pair of electric motors at 430 brake horsepower or, beef it up a little bit, 536 brake horsepower. And you can either get a 70 or an 84 kilowatt hour battery. On the NEDC test cycle, which for some reason is still in use in China, uh, I thought that I thought that had all, all gone. Uh, it's 317 miles. That's like 220, 225 maybe. Uh, real world NEDC, hopefully out, uh, hopelessly outdated. Uh, the EPA range much better. Uh, NEDC all gone now. WLTP is the new one we talk about here in Europe. If you hear me talking about that on the podcast. Peugeot, the French maker, are following up the little city car, the E208, with a slightly bigger car. And it's all electric. After a successful first generation, they are updating the 2008. It's an SUV, and it breaks the code somewhat from the familiar formula because there's going to be the electric 2008. Or maybe I call it the E208. According to Motor1.com, The new electric Peugeot is visually the same as the fossil gobbling sibling, uh, but with the same interior space. There's no fuel tank, there's no engine, but there is is a motor giving you 136 brakes horsepower, and the battery they've squeezed into it is not exactly huge. 50 kilowatt hours for a bigger car than the E208. So the range of 193 miles 
isn't going to be enough for some fossil drivers to move over. Look, the average commute in many places is 25 miles a day. After 150 miles, you want to stop on a road trip and take a comfort break. But still, I think that 200 miles is becoming, for some reason, a bit of a mental block for some people. I kind of see where they're coming from as well. In a 2020 world, and we're rushing towards it pretty quickly, 200 miles for an EV is kind of becoming the standard. And so I'm less worried about charge speeds, by the way, because people aren't hung up on charge. Oh, EV nerds are hung up on charge speeds. But I don't think normal people are hung up on charge speeds. You often see the 0-80% or the 10-80% to figure bandied around. And that's what Peugeot are doing. The 80% capacity charge is reached in 30 minutes. So that'll be some quite fast charging on a 50 kilowatt hour battery. I think for the general public, the ice drivers that are coming over to EV, they're more concerned with like what's the big number what's the range and i think 200 is becoming a bit of a watershed actually I, I might be wrong maybe i'm right i'm often wrong email me your thoughts and i can always read out a counter opinion elon's back on twitter after taking to twitter to announce that he had deleted twitter and for much of the media to go crazy saying he has tweeted about the fact that he has deleted twitter by tweeting about it Right, I'm waiting waiting for those media organisations to catch up there with re- realising what they've done wrong. Clearly, he, he can't have deleted Twitter because he tweeted that he'd deleted it. Anyway, uh, he has fortunately, after a couple of days, come back on. Because as much as uh, his Twitter sitter needs to be there to keep him out of trouble, I think we get so much value from Elon being on Twitter. I'm delighted, actually, that he's back and and talking to people and and not just making announcements, but I was looking at what he was doing in the last couple of hours and just diving into conversations and replying to people, which is awesome. We love you for doing that. Elon Musk announced on Twitter, Tesla is switching the standard colour. The fr- I was going to say free colour. Yeah, if you're spending 40000 plus, nothing is free. But the bundled colour, if you like. At the minute, it's solid black, and he's changing it to solid white. After these changes are implemented, the black paint becomes an option for $1,000, uh, a bit like the same price as you'd pay for, uh, what is it, midnight metallic silver. Uh, well, Simon at Tesla Art, he says that utilising a simple white colour for the Model 3 standard paint option could play to the electric car maker's advantages, actually. And I kind of see where he is coming from with this. It's not going to be as stunning as the multi-coat white. I think they call it pearl white multi-coat, which is, if if you've seen one, uh, that is a stunning colour, by the way, and definitely my favourite. A simple white paint would attract fewer scratches. Well, OK, physically it wouldn't not scratch as easily, but it wouldn't show. I'm hoping I'm explaining myself well enough. It wouldn't show scratches, minor scratches, uh, quite as much as solid black does. And maybe it would make the Model 3 easier to maintain. Personally, we've got a white car. I like white cars. Uh, I also understand, though, how if there are a ton of these sitting in some sort of taxi lot, then it can look a little bit cheap if they're dirty and not looked after. I'll pop a link to Teslarati in the show notes. Right, final story today. Tesla's begun rolling out an update that will effectively turn its cars into a gaming platform, Tesla Arcade will make games powered by the Unreal Engine and the Unity Engine, and it's playable on the dashboards of Tesla cars to keep you occupied when you're sitting around waiting for your car to charge. Insert comment here about how you won't be waiting long because Teslas charge quite quickly. Anyway, Tech Radar say that the Elon Musk tweet about Tesla Arcade also ties in with what he was talking about with the E3 gaming show appearance when he was on stage, and he revealed that the Fallout Shelter would soon be available on the dashboards and the official launch of the Beach Buggy 2 game which they made a brilliant trailer for online which has again been watched over a million times on Twitter it's the one where you press the pedals to play the game and turn the steering wheel but you know Elon said they might take away the 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 pedal aspect and change it to the kind of knobs on the steering wheel but Watch this space. Hey, time for question of the week right now. Thanks to myev.com for setting this. And here's your question to answer, and I'll read it out on Sunday. What's the best way to spread the word about EVs? What do you reckon? Give me your thoughts. Get the old cogs whirring in your brain. And and when you've decided on what you're going to say, let me know. 
please leave a comment on YouTube or Facebook. Or if you want to email me, please do. My personal address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Well, there are 220... Oh, he. That's easy for me to say. Uh, I, I, this is a recorded show. I could just edit that mistake out. But, you know, let's leave it in. There are 223 patrons of the podcast whose sheer generosity means they pay for mistakes like that. If you'd like to see what it's all about, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Well, there are 504 previous episodes online for free. Get the new ones first and free and automatically by hitting subscribe on your favourite podcatcher, your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podcasts, Spotify, or even the audio goes on YouTube. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Maybe I'll catch you tomorrow in person. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.